Clifford has only thrown three picks. What do you see from, from him? He's incredibly accurate. The quarterback is phenomenal, playing at a high level. The one thing he does really well is if he doesn't have his first, second, third read, he's not afraid to pull the ball down and run because he's a great runner. And he runs like a tailback. Uh, he's, got, he's elusive. He can run. He's got great vision. So when you have that, you've got a guy who doesn't just take sacks either, nor does he throw – a lot of incompletions or interceptions because he knows I can just pull it down and run and get the first down and keep the chains moving, reset the down and distance, and go from there. He's a very, very talented athlete, very talented player. He's got weapons everywhere. I mean everywhere. Is, is uh, Hamler kind of like Rondell Moore in his speed and just the way they use him? You know, I mean, I, I've never coached Rondell Moore. I've said that publicly, though. You're right, Chip. I've said, you know, he reminds you of a Rondell Moore, a Wandell Robinson, a guy who can just change the game instantly. The minute he touches the ball, he can change the game because he's so explosive, so fast, so elusive. He's got great ball skills. He can play tailback. He can play running back or uh, play wide receiver. He can do everything. And then they have a supporting cast around them because when you have one player, that's one thing. When you have multiple players that are really fast, that's another thing, and they have multiple players that can really run. I mean, we're talking about world-class sprinters that are on the outside. Then their tight ends are very involved in the run game and pass game. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're... James Franklin's done a great job of recruiting. He's a tremendous recruiter, and you can see it all over that field, especially on the defensive line. And the linebacker. What are the challenges associated with that Penn State defensive line and how they just continue to rotate players? You know, the biggest thing is, is they all – the defensive line – it's very rare that you see this, right? And this is a credit to James and his whole staff of what they've been able to develop because I think they do it better than 99% of what's out there. And what they recruit really well, and then they also can develop. Sometimes you get one or the other. Uh, they can do it all. But their defensive line, they can all stop the run, and they can all stop – they're all pass rushers. So it's very rare to have the both combinations. You're talking from the nose, the three technique, five technique, rush in, whatever it is. They, they all can do both. It's usually, okay, you got two guys inside to stop the run, then you got your pass rushers on the outside. Who can, it isn't the case. They can all do everything. And then they have three or four guys behind those guys that can do the same thing. So they have incredible depth. And then when you look at their depth chart at every position, they've got the sophomores and freshmen right behind them that here they come. So when those seniors graduate, they reload. They're not rebuilding. And they're a blue, blue, blue blood program. Penn State's a blue blood program. They get, they get the top recruits in the country, but they – Penn, that doesn't surprise you with James Franklin. Not only do they get the top, they get the top of the top because it's James Franklin and his staff. BJ, I'm curious if you could um, speak to what it's like to be in this moment with this team. Um, you know, ever since you came on, this has got to be the most excited that the community is about it um, ahead of this game. And then adding on your new contract and stuff, it's like kind of a great moment to be in, right? I'm just kind of curious what that feels like. Well, we always talk about the dream is the journey, and you got to enjoy the journey, whether it's the highs or the lows. You got to look at the lows as a learning point. You got to look at the highs and be able to celebrate them somehow, some way. But we had a talk with our team yesterday about how do you like have fun throughout this, right? Because some of them in college game day, when they were thinking about coming here, some of them asked me like, well, what do we get to do during game day? Like hold signs and no, no, no. But listen, you got to play the game, right? You don't get to go out there and talk to Lee Corso and hang out with him. He's not going to, he's not going to care to hang out with you, but that's their minds, right? And so what they have to understand, just like the homecoming dance question was, they have to understand, listen, this is a time that when you look back five to ten years down the road, this is what you're actually going to talk about. You're going to forget the scores. You might forget the record. You're going to forget necessarily how you played in that game, but you're going to remember the relationships you have with the players, the things that happened in our team meeting, practices, the camaraderie we have, the stories like Casey O'Brien, the stories of just our resolve and our courage in the first three games of, uh, of the season. You're going to look back on this. That's when you're really going to be able to have it all set in when it's all done. That's going to be the funnest part of this. Right now, you're in the thick of things, and everybody else is enjoying it. But that's great. That's why you did it. You, you do it for other people. I mean, we talk about serving and giving. We want Minnesota to be at a high level for everybody else to enjoy as well. We want to bring back all of our Gopher fans. We want to have sellouts at TCF Bank Stadium. We want to be looked at as a national brand. And so they're doing that, but you can't get caught up in that. You've got to worry about your routines. You've got to find a way to go right back to 1-0. and We had the bye week to kind of celebrate, talk about all the things they've been able to accomplish since – 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and sometimes never. And we, we did that in the bye week. And then they, they're amazing. They just reset themselves. And we got to Sunday, and it was 0-0. Zero and, zero. and the focus was right back on track. And that's what you want to be able to see. Or do they keep extending the celebra celebratory times? They didn't. They went right back to being focused, right back to that 0-0, zero and zero, looked to be 1-0 and oh in a championship, you know, biggest game of the year, uh, type 0-0 zero zero matchup.
Hey, Coach, what, what would it mean at this time to beat a team like Penn State? I mean, if you beat a team like Penn State, you probably are going to be ranked in the top 10. What would it mean to the program and to, to what you're building here now for a real long term? Well, I think it's a complete compliment to what James Franklin has built at Penn State and what he was able to take over and how he was able to build it from there and, and basically restoring the brand, right? And not only restoring the brand, taking it to a completely different level, right, in, in modern football. Uh, but I think any win that you have at this point, no matter who's it's against, is significant, right? Because you, you're talking about your final four games, and we know we're playing ranked teams as we continue to go. We're playing for, for three rivalry trophies. Our, our players know that. So it's not just one game means more than the other. They all matter. And it always goes back to game one. If we don't win game one, this doesn't matter. If we don't win game four, this doesn't matter. If we don't give, win, win game seven, this doesn't matter. So – it's hard to sit there and look at it like, okay, well, who are they and where are they ranked? You know, I tell our players internally, they have to think they're ranked one with everything that we do. We want to be the best. We, we, we want to do everything at an elite level, at a championship level. And then sooner or later, you get to that point. But again, Penn State is Penn State for a particular reason. We're on our way of building that in terms of restoring our tradition from the past to the present. But again, if you start looking at it like it's just one, that, that game and what that means and you put all your eggs in that basket, I don't want them to ever think that way. I want them to think in a one-game season that this one got you a chance to be this one and you've earned the right for a big game. No matter who it was against, you earned a right for the big game because of what you've done. And the only way you're going to continue to have that is you keep having success in these big games, in these big moments. But the pressure they have on themselves is earned. The pressure to play a top-five team in the country, that's earned. And – not just play them, because usually they're on all of our schedules, right? But now it's to mean something, right? I think that's really special. Got one or two more for Coach? If we're all done, that's, that works as well. Coach, how do you approach a second bye week in terms of getting players healthy and self-scouting and finding ways to improve? Yeah, we did a uh, – we kind of did something a little bit different. We had a health and wellness week. Uh, Tuesday we had an educational class, which I don't really want to talk about. Uh, to all of you, because you'll sit there and go, why do you have that with your players? But I think it's very educational, very proactive, and very unique and very different. So uh, we did that. And then Wednesday, we had a little bit of Dr. Carley came in and taught our players how to meditate, uh, taught them how to be able to uh, visualize certain things happening, how to calm yourself down before you went to sleep. Uh, Dr. Howell uh, from the University of Minnesota, one of our sleep specialists, came in and, and did some more research again on, on sleep. Uh, and then Thursday, we got them extra massages, uh, and we did a little bit more of a walkthrough. So we took one of the days that we normally practice during a bye week and made it a long walkthrough uh, and added a lift there. And then Friday, we had a little walkthrough in the beginning, or a lift in the beginning, and then they were done. Um, so we've done it a little bit differently because we, we know where we are in the season. We want to be fresh. We want to be healthy. Everybody's beat up. We had to be able to get that, but then also get them back mentally, physically, emotionally, because I think that's really key as you make a run stre or a stretch towards the end. You've got to find a way to be able to fill those tanks back up. And uh, so then we invested into that, which I thought was really important for our players. Have you told your team yet, or if not, when will you? I was hoping to tell them uh, before all this, but Mark's, uh, Mark, Mark and I kind of agreed we should probably put it out there. Everybody was talking about it. But I'll tell them as soon as we possibly can. They know already. The problem is 2019, they knew probably the minute you knew. They knew before I came up here. And – uh, so hiding things or keeping things in like a team meeting all of a sudden, it's very hard to do, uh, especially with what's going on and, and uh, everybody anticipating what was going to happen. But uh, I'll tell them at some point. Uh, I can't legally have them back in for another meeting today. So uh, I'll probably text all of them, and then we'll I'll tell them tomorrow in our team meeting, which, again, whatever happened today, they could care less tomorrow. They're going to be like, yeah, that's old news. What else you got? So that's probably how they'll respond. But. Oh. All right, thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Roll the boat, Sky Go Gophers. Thank you.